the, the work on the self to subdue the anger inside, to, to take out the devil inside, do the practices, the, the ta'weez, the, the charity, the good character, all of these tools to be ignited against the self. You know it's not easy for the self to support, it's not easy for the self to go out and be of support. It's not easy for the self to sit and meditate, it wants to go out and, and you know do things and exciting things. It doesn't want to find out about itself, it doesn't want to find out why he's angry and why they have this characteristic and that. And that's the great fight that Prophet described, that is the battle that all the Prophets of God have described, that to fight oneself, one's bad characteristics, as a result of fighting them you become more sublime, more peaceful and as a result you can enter into a state of Divine love and Divine grace. With the character of Divine love and Divine grace then I'll address you from what we described before from the who, that He'll grant you hidayat, the he, and then He'll grant you from His wadood and love that you be haris alaykum bin mu'mineen hu raufur raheem. That you be very kind and loving to whom Allah loves but don't mistake that as a character that you know doesn't have a power within them. That Allah wounds for them to be loving and kind and those who, who deserve that kindness but at the same time the energy within them, the spiritual strength within them is very strong against oppression and devils and badness. So that's what Allah wants when the character of that is being developed then they become Mahdiyoon. So anyone becoming Mahdiyoon should be with Sayyidina Mahdi But if they're not Mahdiyoon then what they're going to do with Sayyidina Mahdi If the character is not matching that's why they're teaching us that match from now. If you think, no I'll do it then it's most likely you'll be on the other side because you would have given yourself and again that bird box, bird cage, whatever that movie was called was showing that. Nobody was surviving, they looked at it, they became crazy and then they joined and then they went out and did violent acts. So it means that if, if the full enraging of the nafs is opened and the nafs completely makes its partnership with shaitan then there's no way to protect that enzyme. But if from now the practices are in, in, engaged then Allah by allowing these teachings is sending an immense support means the madad and the the emanations and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad is flowing. Anyone just want to tap into it then alhamdulillah they should be able to tap uh, quite easily into that reality as long as they push down their bad characteristics and Allah will keep testing, testing on holy nights you'll find yourself tested uh, a lot. Before a holy event you get a flat tire, you have difficulties, uh, things break down. Allah wants to see are you patient and a sabireen because everything is in Allah's will what is there to be upset about. And when you have sabr during the testings and difficulties then Allah sends the lights and it's like a security test. When the security passed they click the heart and the light flows in and the next level security test comes they click the heart and the light flows in. We said the other time there are two doors in this video game, one for those whom lost and one who, for those whom won. There's not a window you can jump through, either you go through the two doors, you lost that round, you repeat it again or you won that round and you go now to the next level. People think, oh I'll just leave this job, if I'm not working, I'm just I'm fighting with everybody, I'll go get another job. Uh, no, the next round will be even more difficult, it doesn't, doesn't get easier, it actually become much more intense. Like the video game, a bigger creature comes in the room chasing you around but the other level was easier, inshaAllah. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah How can one see Rasulullah in his dream or should wait for his heart to open and see him during meditation? Yeah, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Alhamdulillah is immense that we, we should be seeing at all times that we're at Rosa Sharif and asking and closing our eyes that I'm just at Rosa Sharif and that I'm not worthy of seeing you, that I'm nothing, I'm bad, my bad character, my dirtiness and that I'm just at your 
your holy maqam and your holy station and just holding to the gate and take a path of humility. Because when, when Nabi Musa kept saying, I want to see you and Allah described, you can't see me. So this, that's not a phrase that, that should be encouraged that, let me, let me see you, let me see you. It should be more like, you know, that to enter through humility. That who am I to, to raise my head in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So then I took a path in which to be nothing, nothing and to always be at that maqam and that if anything Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem let me just to see your holy sandal and my forehead upon your feet and that's, that's where if you keep me to be safe at that place. And then let it for Sayyidina Muhammad let for Prophet to determine when he wishes to show or reveal his light or his holy surah to somebody. But we shouldn't be asking for that inshaAllah, we should be taking a path towards humility and admitting to ourselves, La ilaha anta subhanika inni kuntu min adhanimi. The glory be to Allah and for I am verily an oppressor to myself, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu dear Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaamu wa barakatuhu. What is the reality of feeling extremely cold during tafakkur? And there can be many realities, one is just the energy. Anytime you do any type of energy work, the, the energy of, of different beings in the room and the energy that you're, you're bringing has an effect on people that can become extremely hot, extremely cold. So. It's really not that important, it's just a matter of keeping uh, consistency in the connection and if you get scared keep consistent, if you feel agitated or hurt or if you felt something zap you then keep your consistency and pay no attention to anything and, and keep your connection inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Shaykh Wa Can people lose their magnetism? Yes sure. If they didn't achieve it with the level of purity and they felt a little bit of magnetism then sure if they reverse the magnet then you know things can change. We described before in, in, the, in the understanding of love and the connection of love is a magnet and when you study magnets it's a iron, iron and they're magnetized. Allah creates the polarity that when somebody is attracted to somebody there Allah is allowing that polarity to come. So when Allah wants us to be attracted to the Divine, He changes the polarity of the person, you're now attracted to Allah And then now you're attracted to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So the good deeds, good actions, all these characteristics then it's drawing ourselves closer into that polarity. Shaitan's role in life is to come and flip people's polarity, make them to do something bad to flip the magnet away. So as soon as they make istighfar Allah brings the magnet back, right? So in, in when we studied the magnets, if you hit the magnet, let's say the two are attracted, these two magnets, if you hit one magnet you can actually reverse the polarity of the magnet in which it no longer it attracts, it repels each other. So you see when magnet you reverse it, this way it goes woo and pushes out. Your charge is actually pushing you away and that's the role of shaitan, why he makes people fight. Because he's like hitting their magnet with a rod. And as a result of hitting it, he changed the polarity and the people are repelled from each other. So before the Divine, imagine individual people who have a love for each other, shaitan makes them to fight. As a result of their fight the magnet flips and they're no longer attracted. Allah, if you ask for forgiveness and make istighfar, Allah will reverse the polarity and bring you back into a magnetic field reverse the polarity but if we keep doing, keep doing, keep doing or people don't ask for forgiveness and they start to abuse the relationship of each other as a result of shaitan hitting then the polarity flips 
and they actually begin to repel each other. There's no way to bring them back into each other's presence, they have nothing to do with each other because the magnets of their reality have been pushed away. So our whole life is based on understanding magnetism. That's what istighfar is. As soon as we ask, Ya Rabbi Astaghfirullahaladzim that shaitan now hit my, my polarity, hit my magnet, I'm begging your forgiveness then Allah flips it back. But a day may come if we keep doing bad, keep doing bad, keep doing bad that Allah doesn't, doesn't flip the polarity and then we see or we hear from people no matter how high that they left, they left Islam, they left their belief, they left everything. Their magnet was flipped away from Allah and towards the dajjal because they start to do crazy, crazy things that you can't imagine anybody with a mind thinks like that. And that, that, that's the polarity. The magnetism itself it becomes weakened, it's like faith. So if the shaykh's practices have to continuously be strong, the love for Prophet has to be nourished and the nourishment are the good deeds. That's why they go out and encourage people, give, give, support, do, do, do the recitation, do these projects, put out these videos. Because they want the nazar of Prophet upon themselves so that their magnet is continuously getting stronger and stronger because Prophet is happy with those whom are doing these, these acts of love and ishq. And as a result all those whom are doing it their magnets are becoming stronger. So it's the good deeds that make the magnetic pull to each other stronger and stronger and stronger. And that's what they don't understand about gravity. Whatever ex uh, the formula they have for gravity they still don't understand it because they're into their mind. But ishq and love has a, a immense reality with gravity and that has to do with magnetism. Understanding the true nature of magnetism because you study the physical to understand the, the reality of the physical which is concealed within our spiritual reality. Because our spiritual light how is it attracted to something? It's the magnetism of it, it's gravitational pull that it, it, it orbits around the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and begin to be pulled to it. If it should lose its gravity and lose that connection it would be like an astronaut in space just float away, there would be nothing holding you. So it means the reality of, of gravity are unseen ropes, where Allah has unseen ropes. These ropes are of ishq and good character and magnetism and that's what makes, that's what makes the reality of somebody to be drawn to somebody. We said before that's uh, again in your electrons that Allah puts this love within my being to love Sayyidina Muhammad I became now an electron in his orbit, he is the nucleus of my existence. That's when he meant that you have to love me more than you love yourself, he's talking at our atomic reality. So Prophet is describing in that holy hadith of faith, Ya Umar you have to love me more than you love yourself for your iman to be common. This is a direct a direction from Prophet to the atomic reality of Hazrat Umar that your, your ishq and love has to overcome everything for me so that you can enter into my orbit. So only now the scientists understand this atom and electron. So when we bring ourself into that immense love of Prophet because we need the human love, the Divine love will flow, قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُغِبُونَ Allah. Tell them if they love me follow you. So this is not a, a, a love that you can have for Allah because you're a creation Allah's creator. So Allah's giving us this hint that the best of my creation, the most beloved of my creation, move yourself into his holy orbit. And then think of yourself like an electron and he is the nucleus of my existence. So then what happens with your electron? 
is a strong nuclear force and weak nuclear force. These are the two forces that, that hold an electron in the orbit of an atom, of a nucleus, right? There's two forces that hold the electron in the orbit of the nucleus. One, the force of Prophet loving me more ancient than my love for him and me, my love immense directed. As a result of these two forces our love is drawing my electron to collide. I want nothing more than to die and be in his presence. But as a result of not being and not been given that permission, what happens with the electron as it's trying to draw closer, it doesn't reach. But it doesn't mean it stops but we described in the reality of the sama, the electron begins to spin because it's looking for an opening to come. So if you knew Prophet was in that room and they shut all the doors to that room, you going home or you're going to go all around the building looking for a way to get in? If he says, tomorrow I'm going to be appearing here, well, all of us going to break through every window trying to get in. You don't go home say it's finished. So the electron as it's moving, it's now beginning what they call centrifugal spin. It beginning to spin to get into the nucleus. It begins to spin so much trying to find a way into the nucleus that as a result of spinning fast, 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 fast what happens? It begins to rise. So the attraction is pulling it in, it's spinning and then rising. So that's how we are created, you're a hologram. You're just a bunch of atoms that are appearing. So that we leave that for another conversation. Uh, as Salaam Shaykh Sayyid Nurjan. Walaykum As Salaam wa is it advisable to pack up and live in Yemen or to stay home and sell house to do farming nearby? <laughs> to pack up and go to Yemen? <laughs> yeah. No, it is best to stay exactly where you are, where Allah has written your existence to be and where your rizq and, and where your family and everything. So this is not something coming that you can run and hide from. So you, exactly where you, you're supposed to be is exactly where Allah wrote you to be. Had He wanted you somewhere else, He would have written you to be somewhere else. So it's a matter of us where we are to purify. For people whom they purify, 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 Allah give you the secret one night, say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Raheem, you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Raheem and you're exactly where you supposed to be. So I mean this, this and that which is coming is a heavenly kingdom opening upon this earth. As a result of servants whom reach the reality of servanthood, everything can be open for them. They can Bismillahir Rahman Rahim and move through time and space. They can Bismillahir Rahman Rahim bring a shield of energy around themselves and their families. Many, many things that are, is not something that can be described of what Allah to dress the servants with. So running, looking for something is, is, is uh, not the direction or the, the concept that should be understood but how do I sit where Allah has put me and how do I reach the perfection I need to reach? Don't let the mind think, okay the way out I don't need to purify myself, I'll run to Damascus. Well that didn't work very well, they were completely annihilated. People wanted to do that 15 years ago and these poor people would have been dust and ashes. So it's not a matter of place, you are exactly where Allah wanted you to be, it's a matter of the space that you occupy and how to purify that reality of ourself so that no time and, and space will be of importance to us if Allah opens His heavenly kingdom within the heart of the servant, inshaAllah. Uh, As Sayyidi As Salaam How many people understood about the atoms and the electron and the nucleus? 
Maybe they can ponder that and think again tomorrow. Very deep reality that you're manifesting based on that love. You're a hologram, you know you're not solid, you're just a bunch of atoms that are spinning so fast they give the appearance of something solid. Your spinning is for what? Your spinning is for Divine Love, Allah created you with love. So when people don't understand love it's not the passion and, and, and the dunya love, the material love that He created you and your electrons to love the reality of His nucleus. As a result your electrons are making their hajj, they're circumambulating at such a high speed that you're appearing. And Shaykh Sharafuddin Dabastani Qatta Salaseeru has talkings about and teachings that in the state of his electron reality that he could spin so fast that he would vanish and his electron would vanish. And where it would go Allah knows and then where it would appear and appear again. So the immensity, immensity that the spin and the rotation of the electron is such a high rate of speed and such a mystery for creation that it's just something that can't be perceived. But one whom perceives themselves and, and meditate and contemplate how these awliya were understanding and what, what rate of speed. So scientists did find out that when they observed certain electrons that they would vanish in their rotation. They would go and then they would reappear. Where did they go, how long did they go and what happened in that disappearance because of the speed in which they were circumambulating and, and spinning. So it means that the, the immensity of, of our reality. And it's haqqaiq and it's deep, deep reality for our shaqeen is that Allah made the center of their universe to be Muhammadun Rasulullah and the center of that power is La ilaha illallah which is the center of the Muhammadan heart, the center of that reality. And our shaqeen are electrons that circumambulating. The more, the more they enter into their ish the faster their electrons are circumambulating and what we call the oceans of power. And their zikr and their salawat is of immense speed in that rotation in which their love they vanish and then they reappear. <coughs> so. As salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, if someone is radiating negative energies publicly, how to react? Radiating negative energies publicly, if, if you're, you're stuck there then I would imagine just you know making your connection and, and making your salawats. If you're not connected for a reason to be there then you just leave. Most people radiate negativity everywhere they go so you choose the company of who you want to accompany and if you find something to be very negative then you just keep moving to somewhere else and stand somewhere else or go somewhere else. But generally people are, are negative everywhere so you can't, you can't uh, you know run everywhere, you just try to tolerate what you have to tolerate and for what purpose you're there you just tolerate and then you go to the next place inshaAllah. But this life of ours is not about uh, you know hiding from everything. If you have to take your kids out, you take them out, do what you have to do and then you go back home and you, you go out with wudu, you have your taweez, you, you have your protection and you, you keep your head covered, you do all the things that Prophet described for people as a protection for their energy and, and for their being. If you take your hat off and you get attacked then you know you have no, nobody to ask but yourself. How I got sick like that? The sicknesses that are coming it's not only by your nose that you know you thought you, br you breathed something in but you need to be sealed through your head, and through your taweez, through all your actions, through your wudu. So that, that negativity imagine it like an ifrit that just flying around and he land on your back and begin to put something into you that you think you got a cold, you got a flu, you got this or you got that. Yeah, but the, that's an ifrit that's attached to that. So then again we go back into our protections that I wear my taweez, that I have my wudu, that I keep my head covered, 
that I didn't have everything that I'm supposed to, did I make my du'a before I left the house? And then become like a battle when you go out, that you keep yourself in your armament and then hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel and the rest is in Allah's hand. And if something does come with all your practices and all your zikr, it should be lessened and lessened and lessened until you can recover from that attack. But as soon as you start to rely on science and think scientifically then something's off on you. This is a spiritual world reality and you have to keep always your understanding of spirituality. As salaamu respected Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah What can we do that will bring peace and blessings upon a home, family and relationships? JazakAllah khair, forgive me for my ignorance. Yeah, every, everything we described tonight, <laughs> alhamdulillah. You get the book, timeless reality, get your taweezes, uh, do your practices, support the charity, the, play the zikr live in the house so the energy is in the living room and participate, participate. One is that you don't, it's not a spectator sport just watching, so we watch and then we make it real. So we make it real by support, we make it real by spreading the links and doing the da'wah. It's not that everybody has to give talks and so bats, no this is a very guided and, and very particular but you can take that talk and share it to a WhatsApp group, to a Facebook group and if you don't know anyone that wants to talk you can take an item from the store, you can take a link from the charity and you can share that, you can find out if there's a place to give food or the groups that are giving food and you go out and give food. And then you listen to the zikr live, you do your zikr, you do your all rights. As much as you making it real, that light is entering into the home first for yourself and then as you're building yourself and building your energy that light emanates within the house and then the children will be dressed. And when the children see that your actions are matching then their hearts grow with that light and with that reality. But you don't tell them, oh kids you watch, watch, watch and then you leave and, and go cook something. They're not, they're not going to do what you say, they're going to do what you do. So when you live a life that, no our life is, is the nucleus, is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad they will know that, they will understand that, they will have seen that in you. And then that light and that love and that way becomes real for them. So mashaAllah these guys are going out getting food, getting uh, you know everything. In Mispah in Chicago is emptied out Costco and, and uh, put food in, in all over the streets of, of Chicago. We got 5,000 masks and gloves and, and everything. The guys in Vancouver doing their best, uh, Asim in Los Angeles doing their best, Pakistan is immense, all the charities, all the orphanages, all the water wells. So it takes a group of people whom are sincere and they want their faith to be real. We don't praise people by name because an immense amount of hasad comes their way and that, that's, that's, a, that's a kiss of difficulty on you which most people shouldn't want. But but there are times when people are doing so much then that's you know that's the example and that's when the tariqah becomes so real. Our gentlemen who run the center, keep the zikrs live, rain, shine, life and death you see them continuing their recitation <laughs> when they think the whole group was knocked out with colds and flus but still there was always a zikr happening so alhamdulillah. That means that people who are being taught on how to keep their faith to be real. And that's what's important. As much as we make it real, you'll feel the power and the connection to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's the role of the shaykh, he's not the, the direction for people, he's merely the conductor for people. To bring out that which is in you, the best of what's within you, the secret that's within you to bring it out. So that he can benefit from it too, one because people become rijal, they become very strong, very dedicated. And you know the small group of people can move mountains, inshaAllah. We need, a, we need a truck in the UK with all our guys in the UK and all the people whom are supporting in the UK, oh, I need a Fatima Zara helping hand truck in the UK where we, we just go with our minivan, pick up some food from the local distributors who want to donate 
you take this food, wear a Fatima jacket uh, out there and give food out. And then we'll decal the van with a nice, our, our sort of the same logo we have, Fatima Zara Helping Hand and that van should be everywhere. And it's so easy, you go to the people who are throwing away thousands of pounds of food which is just you know horrific. But you see that they don't want to do it either, the managers don't want to do it. You don't have to go and find the whole corporate office. He went strictly just to the manager of his local store and said, don't throw this away, I'll give it to people. They said, no problem, give me a letter from your charity because the laws have been passed in America that you can't sue somebody for giving food out. So all of these retail outlets they give you all their food that they're going to throw away. But they don't have a truck to deliver it, we do. We buy the truck, we go out get the food and give it to the, the people whom are hungry. And has a, it goes a, amazing, you know the, the, the immensity of the barakah that all these organizations, Muslim, Christian, Catholic are receiving food from us. And getting tons of tons of food that they would have thrown away and we're giving to them, giving to homeless people. You don't think Allah is happy that we rescued food? This ni'mat that Allah gave they were going to throw it and, 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 and walk on it. So we need in the UK, we have strong audience UK, the strong audience in South Africa but the means may be more difficult in, in, in South Africa inshaAllah. Sayyidi your talks are so interesting. I love your translation of everything in the context of science, atoms and electrons. Thank you. Thank you, mashaAllah, mashaAllah. Think about tonight what we talked about, about the electrons, the, the whirling and that we exist from love. This spin that we have and the rise based on these three elements of attraction and the spin and then the rise. So Allah created these three elements of our existence. If there was no attraction there would be absolutely no spin and the rise would collapse. So it's very easy for Allah to destroy the whole world. He pulls the attraction from the elements. The electrons won't have any interest in attracting to the nucleus. As a result the whole of this creation, universes included, become but dust. Don't have to explode them, just pulls out the attraction within the atoms. All of this collapses, inshaAllah. <coughs> Tamam, inshaAllah Subhanahu wa bika Rabbil Izzat wa miyatifoon wa salaam ala al-mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <coughs>